Welcome to the Philippines Premier Motor Show. This is Autofocus. I am Ray Louis Gamboa. Here are our features on this episode of your electronic magazine, exclusive to the automobile and its industry. Starting off with reviews of two vehicle models presently in the local market, a van from Maxxis, the V80 Comfort, and a hybrid mid-size sedan from Toyota, the Camry 2.5 V HEV. Plus, a feature-to-feature -feature comparison of two mid-sized SUVs, the next-gen Ford Everest Titanium Plus 4x4 AT versus the Mitsubishi Montero Sport Black Series. On Autopedia, we'll talk about understanding your car's handling and together with the latest news and developments in the local auto industry. We shall have the highlights of the Kia at the Seoul Mobility Show as our special feature. The next 60 minutes is all about the automobile. This is Autofocus and we'll be right back after this short break. Welcome back to Autofocus, the automobile show. We start this episode of your electronic magazine with a review of one of the latest automobile models from Maxus. Looking for an affordable, comfortable, and reliable passenger van? Let's check out one possible option, the Maxus V80 Comfort in this week's edition of Car Review. Maxxis is a British brand with a legacy of building affordable and reliable cargo and passenger vans. Taken over by Saic, Shanghai Automobile and Industrial Corporation, China's largest automotive manufacturing group, Maxxis continues the legacy of offering vans for passengers or cargo, well loved in many parts of the world. Since 2019, Maxxis has been looking to include the Philippines among markets that love its vans. Among its van offerings is the Maxxis V80 Comfort. At 4,950 millimeters long, 1,998 mm wide and 2,132 mm tall, the Maxxis V80 is among the larger, wider, and taller options in its segment. The V80 Comfort also has, at 3,100 mm, among the longest wheelbase in the segment and price position Maxxis chose for the 13-seater passenger van. Despite featuring the classic rectangular box and short nose look for vans, the V80 manages to cut a distinctive presence on the road with a design that serves both function and elegant aesthetic. The front windshield is expansive. The front door windows, already with a low belt line, also slope downward. The power adjustable side view mirrors are large and come with blind spot views. All these help provide good all-around visibility for the driver. The sharp-looking halogen headlights are large and come integrated with daylight running lights and turn lamps. Also helping provide good visibility at night are front and rear fog lamps. The stepboard automatically extends outward when a door is slid open for easier ingress into the V80, which sits relatively high off the ground. The V80 cabin is among the roomiest in its segment, offering more than enough space for 13 full-size adults, including driver. The seats are well cushioned and upholstered in soft fabric. Up front is a driver's seat that manually adjusts eight ways and comes with an armrest, and two passenger seats with good elbow and leg room. On the second row are three individual seats that recline individually. The third row also features three seats that recline individually, one on the right separated by a narrow aisle from two continuous ones on the left. The aisle allows easy passage into the fourth row with individual seats for four that also recline. All passengers have enough room to stretch legs underneath the seats in front of them. There's good space for luggage and other cargo can be slid underneath the fourth row seats. The backrest of the fourth row seats also fold to provide space for more cargo. The instrument cluster is found at the center of the dashboard. 
also found in the center are the manual rotary controls for the air conditioning system that features lots of air vents for the rear passengers. The VED also comes with an audio system with a radio tuner, aux in and USB port, Bluetooth connection and plays through four speakers. Underneath the short hood of the Maxxis V80 is a 2,499cc 4-cylinder turbo CRDI diesel engine that generates a maximum of 136 horsepower at 3,800 revolutions per minute and 330 Nm of torque from 1,800 to 2,600 rpm. The engine is mounted transversely and sends power to the front wheels via a 6-speed manual transmission. Having the instrument cluster in the center takes a bit of getting used to, but the low dashboard and high seat position provide great visibility of the road. The manual shifter is well placed on the dashboard just to the right of the steering wheel. The four-spoke steering wheel is angled like those for large trucks, but a comfortable driving position is easily found with an eight-way adjustable driver's seat. Front-wheel drive makes the V80 quite nimble and easy to maneuver for a van of its size, kept along by the hydraulic power-assisted steering. The suspension system features front McPherson struts and independent parallel leaf springs in the rear and tuned for more comfort. More than adequate stopping power comes from a brake system using discs on all four wheels and ventilated in front. The V80 also comes with anti-lock brake system and electronic brake force distribution. For safety, the V80 Comfort is equipped with driver and front seat airbags, three-point seat belts for driver and front seat passengers, and two-point seat belts for those in the rear seats. Added for security is an immobilizer. While the Maxus V80 Comfort does not have many of the modern-day driver assist and safety features found in some of its competition, it has enough at its price point to still be considered one of the best value-for-money passenger vans in the market. The latest auto industry news and developments right after this break. At the core of Toyota Gazoo Racing lies motorsports DNA. Combine that with the Philippines' best-selling sedan, you get the Vios GRS. Its black accent details and aero kit upgrade capture the feel and excitement on the track. And the 10-speed CVT that exudes the TGR competitive spirit. On the road or on the track, always be ready for a heart-racing exhilarating ride. The Vios GRS. Bring on the thrill. Mitsubishi Strata Athlete, confident to the core. Welcome back to Auto Focus. We now have the latest auto industry news. Imagine owning an electric scooter, then one can easily swap depleted batteries for fully charged ones at battery swapping stations. No more wait time for charging. This is for the future of sustainable personal transport like Globe Group's 917 Ventures and Ayala Corporation in partnership with Gogoro Smart Scooters of Taiwan will introduce locally this year. Globe has announced that it is bringing Gogoro Smart Scooters and efficient battery swapping technology to the Philippines. Gogoro has transformed two-wheel mobility in Taiwan and fostered a new smart mobility industry with a network of eco-friendly businesses and end-users. According to Globe, the Gogoro ecosystem is very convenient as its swap and go technology allows riders to swap out depleted batteries for charge ones in just seconds and go on their way. Already 70 Globe employees are trying out Gogoro scooters and battery swapping systems. They will test the systems for two months starting in May and share insights on their experience to ensure an even better customer experience once the e-bikes become available to the public later this year. The first of network of battery swapping stations planned for Metro Manila and later across the country is now in place at the Globe Tower. In response to the loud clamor for an automatic variant of the highly popular small hatchback, Suzuki Philippines has rolled out the new Suzuki Espresso AGS. Uh, ever since we introduced the Espresso last 2020, there was really a clamor from the market for uh, automatic transmission. And you know, Suzuki is the pioneer in compact cars. Uh, this is the voice of our majority of the market. So in response to that, uh, we are now introducing the Espresso now with the Suzuki's Auto Gear Shift technology. Uh, AGS is actually an automated manual transmission of Suzuki 
that delivers the performance and fuel efficiency of a manual and the convenience of driving an automatic transmission. The new Suzuki Espresso unveiled during the launch held at Okada Manila also featured more upgrades that should make the small SUV-like hatchback even more popular. The new Espresso comes with an improved a K10C engine now with intake VBT and dual injection technology by Suzuki. Both of them combined and aim to create better fuel efficiency for the car. The new Espresso engine also comes with engine auto stop start system that automatically stops the engine when the vehicle is in idle to prevent unnecessary fuel consumption. Suzuki has also made the Espresso all the more safe and enjoyable ride. In terms of safety, the new Espresso is equipped with heel hole control and electronic stability program that are not commonly found for this segment. And to create a more enjoyable ride, the Espresso comes with a new generation display audio equipped with a smartphone linkage through Android Auto and Apple CarPlay plus a vehicle information display. Now to make the driving more convenient, it has an audio control on the steering wheel for a more pleasurable drive. Priced at 660,000 pesos, the new Espresso AGS comes in four colors. Sizzle orange, metallic granite gray, and red and white. The new Espresso cell comes with a manual transmission variant priced at 620,000 pesos. New Espresso AGS is already available in all 72 Suzuki dealerships nationwide. So, a dealer also are ready to provide a test drive to customers well. Ford Philippines is looking to strengthen its leadership in the pickup segment with the arrival of the next-gen Ranger Raptor. Ford held the launch during the first day of the Ford Island Conquest Year 6 event held at Arca South in Taguig, where people had the chance to see and experience driving the next-gen Ranger Raptor as well as other members of the Ford lineup. You can not only experience the next generation Raptor, but you can also experience our Ranger Wild Track, Everest, Titanium Plus, as well as the all new Ford Territories. Designed and engineered by Ford Performance, the next gen Raptor arrived with a reliable, powerful, and efficient powertrain, smart technologies, and advanced safety features, a commanding exterior look, all the while delivering upgraded interior comfort and convenience. First, you can certainly see the enhancements to the exterior of the vehicle. In addition to that increased size on the technology, the screens inside, you have a 12.4 inch screen as well as a 12 inch screen. And those screens really enable technology. So the 360 camera, not only what you're used to as far as a 360 camera, but also a top down feature for the camera. So those are just a couple of features. The big thing that the customers will experience at Ford Island Conquest is what it feels like to drive in the Ranger Raptor. So customers can experience a combination of uh, the wider stance, which contributes to a smooth ride, which is incredible. Also, certainly the suspension with the two and a half inch box shocks add to just the overall comfort of the vehicle. So it's really kind of a combination of, yes, a ton of new features for the next generation Ranger Raptor, but what those features do and mean to the ride is what customers will experience here at the event. The next-gen Ranger Raptor is now available across four dealers nationwide with a starting price of 2,339,000 pesos as comes with five-year warranty for a worry-free ownership experience. That is cool, right? It's like, love that. <laughs> yes. Moms for the Motoring Media were pampered by Honda Cars Philippines in celebration of Mother's Day. So today is an extended celebration of the Mother's Day. So we would like to give a special treat to the mothers of the motoring media. We'll be driving from PGC all the way to Tagaytay and give them a special treat um, and enjoy the spa treatment uh, in Tagaytay, in their true world. The Motoring Media Moms got lent a all-new Honda BRV unit each which they used to drive in convoy up to the Nurture Wellness Village in Tagaytay. Honda may have also wanted the event to showcase how the BRV can be an ideal car for working as well as full-time moms. The first of all is the total uh, post-count. Uh, because definitely we have the uh, best uh, shampoo there, uh, fewer efficiency, so that's a way to uh, reduce uh, the total cost uh, when you own the 
the vehicles and also for the families the uh, safety is a uh, really important thing and so uh, we also have a barrier for with the Honda sensing so that we can uh, protect yourself uh, from the uh, uh, traffic action and also the, uh, the third one is the board uh, space uh, we have uh, uh, seven series for this uh, for these people and this is uh, totally one of the best options for the uh, families and the business In 2008, Isuzu Philippines World Vision Development Foundation and TESA joined hands to start the Isuzu Heart and Smile Project in Tacloban Leyte, which provides opportunities for individuals from poor families to learn to become mechanics and earn a good livelihood. Recently, the project held a graduation ceremony for Batch 19, composed of 16 scholars who now have the skills and training to be gainfully employed in the automotive servicing industry. We are here right now at Isuzu TESA Old Mechanic Training Center for the graduation ceremony of our batch 19 schoolers. In addition of this, we are also welcoming our batch 23 schoolers that will take NC1 to NC4 auto mechanic courses. Over the years, the Heart and Smile project has seen more than 350 scholars become productive members of the society while improving the lives and welfare of their families. So this is a very exciting program, a promising program actually for our scholars. And through the years, for 15 years now of our partnership, TESDA, Isuzu, and World Vision, we are able to provide opportunity for our scholars to be employed, not just in the Philippines, but even uh, around the world. TESDA, the Technical Education and Skills Development Authority, is proud of its role in the partnership. All the skill sets, what they have learned during the course of their two years uh, training here, earning in C1, in C2, in C3, and in C4, yes, they are marketable in the arena of automotive servicing in the world. John Kenneth Mendova expressed the gratitude and what the Heart and Smile project meant for their families. Hindi uh, nagpapasalamat ba ako sa mga sumuporta para sa amin sa pag-aaral namin dito. Sa TESDA, Isuzu at saka sa World Vision po. Car enthusiasts flock to the SMX Mall of Asia over the four days of the 31st of Transport Show, the country's longest-running auto show. The Transport Show again showcased beautifully restored classic and vintage cars, exotic automobiles and supercars, as well as uniquely modified automobiles. We will have a uh, showroom of cars from classic, restored cars, vintage cars, supercars, luxury cars, all of the above because the transport show focuses more on classic, uniqueness of every car that you've never seen. So normally you will not see brand new cars that are on display here. So we all have all the restoration cars and vintage cars and supercars only. The transport show also featured booths set up by distributors and retailers of the latest and trendiest automotive aftermarket products. This early organizers of the transport show are already preparing for the Manila Auto Salon. After the transport show, we will be having the Manila Auto Salon, which will happen on the first three, four days of December. This time it's going to be a different show because this will be more on aesthetics, more on SUVs, off-road, that's why it's the Manila Auto Salon. A very different uh, idea and concept from the transport show. Those are the latest news and developments in the automotive industry. We shall take another short break. Stay with us. I'll be right back. Who said happiness can only be found on the ground? Next generation Ford Ranger. Do the undone. Reserve yours now on Ford.com.ph or at your nearest Ford dealer.
Welcome back to Autofocus, the country's premier automobile news and features electronic magazine. Here's our comparison of the latest automobile malls belong to the same category on Head to Head. This edition of Head to Head pits the next-gen Ford Everest Titanium Plus 4x4 automatic transmission against the Mitsubishi Montero Sport Black Series. The next-gen Ford Everest arrived to set new benchmarks for size, performance, driver assist, and safety features in the mid-size SUV segment. How does its top-end variant, the next-gen Ford Everest Titanium Plus 4x4 AT, compare to the Mitsubishi Montero Sport Black Series? The next-gen Everest is 4,914mm long, 1,923mm wide, and 1,842mm tall, with a 2,900mm long wheelbase and 227mm minimum ground clearance. The Mitsubishi Montero Sport is 4,825mm long, 1,850mm wide, and 1,835mm tall, with a 2,800mm long wheelbase and a 218mm high ground clearance. The new Everest arrived at a fashion profile featuring sharp horizontal and vertical lines and C-clamp headlamps and prominent horizontal bars with a blue oval front and center. The Titanium Plus also is distinguished by a chrome front grille, matrix LED headlights, panoramic moonroof, puddle lamps, and the power lift gate that can be activated with foot movement. Standard features include daytime running lamps, auto on-off headlights, following home lights, front and rear fog lamps, LED taillights with full width design, high mount stop lamp, power folding and power adjustable side turn indicators, side steps, roof rails, front and rear splash guards, and front and rear tow hooks. The Titanium Plus also features rain sensing wipers. The Montero Sport Black Series comes in either white diamond or jet black mica, with accents and garnishes all done in black. Blacked out are the grille, headlamp extension, front and rear bumper garnish, the rooftop itself, and roof rails the spoiler, the shark fin antenna, and the 18-inch alloy wheels. The next-gen Everest comes with smart keyless entry and push-button start. The Titanium Plus sits 7 and seats upholstered in real and synthetic leather. The driver and front passenger enjoy 8-way power adjusting seats. The second row seat for 3 slides forward. The 50-50 folding seats for 2 in the third row fold electronically. The driver and front seat passenger enjoy a center console with dual cup holder recesses and dash-mounted pop-out cup holders. Second and third row passengers have places to store their things as well as 12 volt power outlets. The Titanium Plus features a 230 volt inverter in the rear console and 12 inch digital display for the instrument cluster. The leather wrapped steering wheel features controls for the audio and integrated mobile phone systems, although the Everest comes with voice operated systems. Other comfort and convenience features in the next gen Titanium Plus 4x4 include power windows, auto dimming rear view mirror, dual zone electronic automatic temperature control, ambient lighting, driver and front passenger sun visors with illuminated vanity mirrors. The Montero Black Series sits 7 in seats upholstered in material that looks and feels posh. The front seat slides and reclines with the driver's seat also adjusting for height. The second row seat for 3 splits and folds 60-40 and features a fold-down center armrest. The third row seats for 2 splits 50-50 and can be folded flat. The wide center console and armrest comes with twin cup holders. This is also where one finds the electronic parking switch as well as the auto hold function. The Montero Sport Black Series features the new 8-inch color LCD instrument meter display. The leather-wrapped steering wheel tilts and telescopes and comes with buttons and controls for the audio, the multi-information display, as well as the adaptive cruise control. The automatic climate control system features rotary dials, digital meters, and a Nano-E air purifying system to keep in-cabin air fresh and clean. Other standard comfort and convenience features include keyless entry, front and accessory outlets, power windows, auto dim day, and night rear view mirror. The Everest Titanium Plus comes with a 12-inch high-resolution touchscreen and the latest Sync 4A communication and entertainment system featuring enhanced voice recognition, wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto compatibility, USB connections, and a pad for wireless charging. The Montero Sport Black Series features a multimedia entertainment system with an 8-inch display, Apple CarPlay and Android Auto compatibility, hands-free voice control, GPS navigation system, 1 HDMI and 2 USB connections, and 6 speakers. The Everest Titanium Plus 4x4 is powered by a 2.0-liter bi-turbo diesel engine that generates a maximum 210 PS at 3,500 RPM and 500 Nm of torque from 1,750 to 2,000 RPM and made it to a 10-speed automatic transmission with an electronic shifter. The next-gen Everest Titanium Plus powertrain features a terrain management system that provides six on- and off-road drive modes, normal, eco, tow haul, slippery, mud ruts, or sand. The 4x4 variant comes with an electronic locking rear differential and a drive mode selector to easily shift drive modes from 2H, 4H, and 4L. 
The Next Gen Everest suspension system features double wish modes with coil spring and anti-roll bar in front and coil spring with watts link and anti-roll bar in the rear. The brake system uses a ventilated disc on all four wheels. Underneath the hood of the Black Series Montero Sport is a 2.4-liter MiVec diesel engine with variable geometry turbo generating 181 PS and 430 Nm of torque. It is made into an 8-speed automatic manual transmission that drives the rear wheels and comes with sport mode and paddle shifters. The suspension system features the front double wishbones with coil springs and stabilizer bar and three link coil springs with stabilizer bar in the rear. The Montero Sport brake system is equipped with ventilated discs on all four wheels. Only the next-gen Everest Titanium Plus 4x4 comes with advanced driver assistive safety technologies that include adjustable speed limiter, adaptive cruise control with stop-and-go and lane centering, blind spot information system with cross-traffic alert and braking, pre-collision assist, lane departure warning and lane-keeping system, auto-high beam, distance alert and distance information, forward collision warning, driver alert system, reverse braking assist, hill descent control, ESP with traction control system and electric brake booster, tire pressure monitoring system. The top-of-the-line Everest also comes with 360-degree camera and front and rear parking sensors to aid with parking inside spaces. But it can also park the Everest for you with the Active Park Assist 2.0. Just hold down the Park Aid button and trust the system to park the Everest for you. Other standard safety and security features in the Everest are the Hill Launch Assist with rollover mitigation, electronic parking brake, 7 airbags including side and curtain and knee airbags, anti-lock brake system with electronic brake force distribution, security alarm system, ELR safety belts, and child seat Isofix anchor points. But more significant than the things easily seen as included in the Black Series Montero Sport are those features that can only be experienced as they work to make the Mitsubishi's popular SUV safer and more fun to drive. These include such active and passive safety features as Forward Collision Mitigation System or FCM, Adaptive Cruise Control, Active Stability and Traction Control or ASTC, and Ultrasonic Mass Accelerator Mitigation System or UMS among other advanced automotive tech. The UMS is particularly significant as it reduces accidents resulting from abruptly pressing the accelerator from standstill by detecting obstacles in front or behind the Montero. FCM alerts the driver with visual and audible warnings of the risk of collision and can automatically apply brakes if their driver doesn't respond to the warnings. Other standard safety features in the Montero Sport Black Series include trailer stability assist, hill start assist, anti lock brake system with electronic brake force distribution multiple airbags, 3-point ELR seat belts for driver and all passengers. I so fix it either actors. After checking out specs and features of both the Everest Titanium Plus 4x4 and the Montero Sport Black Series, which fit your needs, wants, and budget? Maaasahan kailangan na matibay Pang matagalan kasama mo sa pag-unlad ng negosyo Modernong disenyo, kaya-kaya ang cargo mo Nang tatak na ito Isuzu Trap is level up with Isuzu Level up mo ang iyong negosyo Isuzu Trap is level up with Isuzu Level up with Isuzu Trap is Motul is the most trusted motor oil of the top teams competing in some of the world's most grueling race competitions. The WRC, the WTCC, and the Japan GT. Motul is the only 100% fully synthetic motor oil in the market. It has antioxidation properties that prevent premature thickening and aging due to thermal stress and guarantees total engine protection. For more information about Motul engine oils, visit www.motul.com.ph Life comes at you fast. If you're brave enough, drive right back at it. Brave the big city or the great outdoors. Brave the carpool or the extra cargo. Brave the unexpected with Honda Sensing. Brave the long road with fuel efficiency to reach your destination. The all-new Honda BRV. Brave the next level. Welcome back to Autofocus, the country's premier automobile news and features electronic magazine. 
our special feature is next. Sunshine Television was among those privileged with an invitation from Kia Philippines to attend the Seoul Mobility Show. This special feature showcases the highlights of Kia's participation at South Korea's largest mobility energy exhibition. Kia's vision of the future for mobility is electric. It is also digital. And it is not all about the cars but also the whole experience of owning a Kia. Already, Kia's vision of mobility in the future is taking shape in South Korea. In Kia Philippines invited members have needed to Seoul to experience a future of mobility according to the Korean car maker. We are here in Seoul at a very good time because this is the uh, Seoul Motor Show. And in the Seoul Motor Show yesterday, we launched the all-new Kia EV9. This is the big SUV, full-sized SUV, uh, fully electric vehicle of uh, Kia. And this will be available in Seoul initially and then in other markets very soon. EV9 is the second electrified model born from the company's EV-only eGMP platform, following the mid-size electric SUV EV6 launch in 2021. The EV9 is the first electric large SUV model in Korea equipped with both innovative technology and spatiality, and will provide a new driving experience that will completely change the concept and method of movement. The EV9, as mentioned yesterday, has displayed major technical capabilities, more than uh, most electric vehicles in its class can. Aside from launching the EV9, he also showcased the EV6, the GT Line, and GT models, as well as three taxis and commercial vehicles, such as the new Nero EV and Nero Plus. From the Seoul Mobility Show, Kia ferried the Philippine media delegation to the Kia 360, heretofore known as the Kia B360. At the Kia 360 interactive and communicative display shows, Visitors a glimpse of Kia's new direction for providing clean and sustainable mobility solutions as well as stylish mobility lifestyles. Our objective is to make sure that we're aware of uh, the developments in technology in the cars that are available for Kia. A visit to Kia's flagship dealership in Korea was the final highlight of the trip to Seoul. This morning, we are in the flagship dealership, a fully operational dealership that is using state-of-the-art technology for actual customers to use. If you walk around, we're using interactive videos, panels, almost paperless in fact. The experience starts with online reservation, for example, you can test drive, you can pick the routes that you have. So this is the, these are the assets that we want our media friends to experience. He plans to bring all that the brand offers in terms of vehicles, technology, and customer service to the Philippines as soon as it can. We started converting our dealerships in the Philippines to the new corporate identity. And you have seen that happen Pretty fast, no? in the last few months, we were able to convert more than half of them, and pretty soon all of them. But that's on phase one. This is already a different phase because this is using technology for interactive experiences. Again, the intention is to bring them forward to, to the country because customers will benefit for, from it. It showcases technology of Kia, not just on the car, but on the overall customer experience. The question now is, when will Kia Philippines make the new vehicles and technology showcased at the Seoul Mobility Show available to Filipinos? What do we go for? We go for experience. We go for excitement. 
We go for sport. We go for style. We go for fun. We go for the Toyota We Go. Are you into grassroots racing? Slaloms, autocross, time attacks, and circuit racing. Do you like to keep your daily ride in tip-top condition? Do you want to improve the performance and ride of your vehicle? Then head over to Fix Stop Auto Service along 91 Congressional Avenue, Project 8 in Kazan City. Fix Stop Auto Service can level up the performance and ride of your daily rider weekend racer of all brands, models, and makes from Japanese, American, European, and all other global manufacturers. Fix Stop Auto Service offers preventive maintenance services as well as upgrades of brakes, suspension, and other mechanical works. Fix Stop also caters to all your needs for performance tires and accessories to make your dream vehicle stand out on the road or for just your enjoyment. For appointments, call 0917-803-8283 or message us on our Facebook page, www.facebook.com slash fixstopautoservice. Welcome back. We have more cars for you to know and appreciate as we have our second car review this week. Toyota Philippines prides itself as offering among the most extensive hybrid model lineups in the country. Among this is the Toyota Camry 2.5 V HEV, the only Camry variant made available locally at the present time. Carview takes a look at what the Toyota Camry V HEV offers aside from the hybrid powertrain. The Camry has been around for many years now, attaining a global status as a best-selling executive sedan. Over many generations since it was first rolled out to the world back in the 1980s, the Toyota Camry steadily grew in size from a compact to a mid-size sedan. It also evolved from a boxy sedan to a more sleek and sporty look with a classy demeanor. The latest generation, the 8th Camry available locally, fits right in the mid-size or large executive sedan category. The Toyota Camry 2.5 VHEV is 4,885mm long, 1,840mm wide, and 1,445mm tall, and clears the ground by 140mm. The Camry presents a low and wide stance for that sporty yet elegant look. Sharp character lines on the hood and the sides enhance the look of an executive sedan made for top-tier individuals. That look was also helped along by the 18-inch alloy wheel strapped by 235-45R18 tires. The Camry exterior comes with all the bells and whistles of the top-of-the-line models. The slim, sharp, and swept-back headlights, quite stylish yet functional, feature bi-beam LEDs, automatic headlight leveling, daytime running lights. It comes with LED front fog lamps, outside rear-view mirrors that power adjust, auto-track memory function as well as turn signals and rain-sensing wipers. The rear combination lamps feature LED fixtures with black accents with high-mount stop lamp and emergency brake signal adding to safety. Then there's the moon roof. Mandatory for premium flagship models, which tilts and slides and features jam protect function. The interior of the Camry is all elegance in class and state of the art googles and whatnots. One gets into the Camry with a smart keyless entry. Inside, one gets to enjoy smooth premium leather for seats, soft touch molded trim with leather on doors and dash. The cabin is quite roomy for five adults. The driver gets to enjoy a seat that hugs and comforts with 8-way power adjust, lumbar support, which can memorize preferred settings. The leather-wrapped steering wheel tilts and telescopes electronically, and again, the preferred can be set in memory. The instrument panel and other controls are ideally placed within eyesight and reach of the driver and featuring state-of-art tech with LED illumination, 7-inch TFT multi-information display, and economy meter. Also quite noticeable is how the thinner front pillars and taller windows provide better all-around visibility for the driver. The seats in the back where most executives can be found in executive sedans also is quite roomy and comfortable for three, but it really is optimized for the comfort of two in the back. Power sunshades in the rear and metal shades in the rear door window provide protection against hot sun or for privacy. The three-zone automatic air conditioning system makes it comfortable for all, driver, front, and rear seat passengers. A rear control panel system for seats, audio, air conditioning ensures this. The Camry comes with an infotainment system that features a 9-inch touchscreen display with Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, Smart Device Link, Miracast, AM FM Radio, Bluetooth, and USB connection. This plays through a 9-speaker JBL system. 
It also comes with a wireless charger, another thing that executive types expect to have in their sedans. Other comfort and convenient features include power windows, speed sensei power door locks, rear USB charger, 12 volt accessory outlet, 8 cup and bottle holders, electronic parking brake. For whatever reason, Toyota Motor Philippines decided at the time of the local rollout of the 8th generation Camry to only make the 2.5 VHEV variant available, adding one more hybrid model to its local lineup. The hybrid powertrains combines a 2.5 liter gasoline engine that generates 178 PS and 221 Nm meters of torque, and an electric motor that when combined produces a maximum 221 horsepower. By seamlessly combining an efficient gasoline engine and a high-output electric motor that self-charges, the Camry optimizes fuel mileage. The battery-powered motor drives the vehicle at low speeds, while both engine and battery supplies power car during acceleration. The hybrid battery is charged during braking. Made into a CVT or continuously variable transmission, the hybrid powertrain comes with three driving modes, Eco, Normal, and Sport aside from the EV mode. Like all its predecessors and why it was a global hit, the Camry 2.5 VHEV provides great comfort with good driving and handling performance. Sure-footed in switchbacks, stable at cruising speeds, and quite comfortable riding over rough spots on the streets and highways, but McPherson struts and double wishbones in the rear for the suspension and ventilated in front and solid rear discs for the brakes. And now with a complement of Toyota Safety Sense Driver Assist Tech, the Camry provides a more confident ride in varied road and weather conditions, in crowded urban streets, and wide open countryside roads. TSS Tech includes automatic high beam, lane tracing assist, lane departure alert, and dynamic radar cruise control. This complements other standard safety technologies in the Camry, anti-lock brake system, vehicle stability control, hill start assist control, blind spot monitor, rear cross traffic alert. Other safety features include 3-point ELR seat belts with pretension and force limiter in the front seat, and 3-point ELR seat belts in the rear, SRS airbags, and child restraint system. Panoramic view monitors and clearance and back sonar, 8 points all around, also make it quite easy to park the Camry even in tight spaces. If you like being driven around in style and comfort, over the work week and driving yourself on fun weekend adventures outside the metro. The Camry may just be your ideal vehicle. Know more about your car and how to take care of it here on Autopedia. Okay, now we're gonna talk about handling. And by handling, I don't mean race car handling, which 99.99% of us will never do anyway. What we're going to be talking about is how the car handles normally on the road. So you can go to YouTube and then there are lots of videos explaining what camber is, what caster is, and all of this stuff. But what we're going to be talking about is a bit more practical. How to know if your car needs alignment or not. And how to check if the alignment shop did a proper and correct job after you have it aligned. So, so if they did a sucky job, you can always tell them that, hey, car's not aligned, it's a back job. The easiest test that anybody can do, actually, you do it unconsciously, you always have one hand on the wheel to keep the car going straight because, as you can see here, we're going to go straight. The second that you let go of the steering wheel, and we're about to crash into the Jeep. <laughs> that's how you know your car needs alignment. And that's also the test after you have your car have alignment done in the alignment shop, you let it go. If it tracks straight, then job's well done. If it doesn't, then back job. Actually for alignment, the biggest factor that they adjust to make the car go straight or not is toe in and toe out. <laughs> Not, not camber per se. Camber relates more to how the car turns, which we'll explain in a bit. We're going to explain the terms with actual wheels rather than a diagram because having actual stuff is a lot easier to visualize. The most common that you hear is camber alignment. That simply means labas o pasok yung wheel. So this is negative camber. This is positive camber. 
almost all cars now don't have positive camber anymore. A lot of the cars now, when you buy it stock, straight from the factory, have a very, very slight negative camber, both on the front and in the back. Why they do this? Because when you have a car that's negatively cambered and then when you corner, the wheels actually straighten out. So we're gonna exaggerate it a bit. So you have a car that says negative camber like this. When you corner, weight shifts out, the wheel gets straighter so there's more grip on the road. And when you turn the other way, the same thing happens. Weight is on this wheel, this wheel gets straighter. So there's more grip on this one. So that's what camber is. The next question is, hindi ba mapuputput yung gulong ko dahil naka negative camber ako? The answer is no. <laughs> the amount of camber is very, very slight. Usually, a degree is a lot. So it's anywhere from half a degree to one degree. That's the stock setting of, of almost all cars now. Uh, there are some rare cars like Mazda 3s have about a degree and a half, sometimes two degrees of negative camber at the back. And by the way, that's what makes the car handle so well because of that extreme negative camber at the back. If you hear and hang around with car people often enough, you'll hear na napuputput yung loob ng gulong ko. It's because of if you have too much negative camber like this, only this part is on the ground. This part here does not rub the ground. So the end result is you get inside tire wear, which means it's napuputput sa, lo sa loob. And since you're a cheapskate, you rotate muna lang yung goma para maputput naman yung labas. <laughs> but as we showed earlier, if your car goes straight or not when you let go of the steering wheel, a lot of it has to do with toe in and toe out. And then for this one, we need to have a shot from above the tire. <laughs> this is toe in. This is toe out. Again, the stock setting is almost always slightly, slightly towed in from the factory. And it's pretty easy to see. If you have an old uh, Transformers toy that with one wheel wobbled like that, obviously it will not go straight. If it's wobbled like this, it will also not go straight. If it's straight like this, with very, very slightly pointing inward, then this will actually go straight when you roll it. Having the opposite of like that, this will also go straight, but it will be very wiggly. So most of the adjustments when you're having a car aligned to go straight is actually the toe in and toe out. The third term that you will hear is caster alignment. Uh, most of the cars now, we don't really adjust this anymore because there's not much to adjust and adjusting it doesn't really affect anything unless you're racing. So let's forget about that one. So the two important things to remember are toe in, toe out, and then camber alignment for tire wear. But once again, the best test, if your alignment job is great or not, let go of the steering wheel. That advice also same goes for people who install lowering springs. They always ask, do you need an alignment after you install lowering springs or any other suspension work? Same principle goes. Let go of the steering wheel. If your car go runs straight, you don't need an alignment. If it veers left and right at Kumakabig, then you need an alignment. That's how handling is done for us normal people 99.99% of the time and that's all what we need to be concerned about. Yes, you can have lowering springs, better shock absorbers, but the thing is for normal people driving on normal roads, handling is how straight your car goes. And when you ask it to turn, and it turns and it's not malikot, it's not all over the road. That is handling for the common person. <laughs> That's our feature in Autopedia this week. Taking care of your ride has been made easier. And that's Autofocus this week. We hope you have found this episode of Electronic Automobile Magazine informative as well as entertaining. Check us out on our Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram accounts. On behalf of my dad, Butch Gamboa, this has been your host, Ray Louis Gamboa. Please stay safe and healthy.